I, Kwan Pak Kin, do further solemnly swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Singapore, and that I will observe the laws and be the true, loyal and faithful citizen of Singapore. Sign your name is the way you do it. So over here... This simple ceremony has remained unchanged over 30 years. It took less than five minutes, but it marked a change in their lives. The year was 1957, and the people, immigrants, who had decided to make good their homes in Singapore. The bill that made it all possible, the Singapore Citizenship Ordinance, passed on 16th October 1957. Under British rule, there had been no such thing as Singapore citizenship. It was possible to become naturalised British subjects, but that was too expensive for most people. Besides, the Chinese immigrants felt more attached to the island than the British crown. In the 40s, local Chinese leader Lian Yin Chao took up their course. Through the Chinese Chamber of Commerce, he suggested to the British that all immigrants who had been here for eight years or more should be given Singapore citizenship. However, the colonial authorities were reluctant to grant a special kind of citizenship to the immigrants on the island. They doubted the loyalty of the immigrants to Singapore because many of them continued to maintain close ties with their motherland. Circumstances changed in the 50s. At that time, the British decided to grant Singapore self-rule, but there were difficulties involved. Only about half the population in Singapore were British subjects and had the right to vote. The other half, the immigrants, had no voting rights, but were not a force to be dismissed easily. Many of them had begun to regard the island as home. They were sending fewer remittances to their motherland. And scenes like these, of sending fellow immigrants back to China, had become rare. The Labour Front governments of David Marshall and Lim Yu Hock discussed this issue with the British during constitutional talks in London in 1956 and 57. They felt that granting Singapore citizenship to the immigrants would help integrate them fully into society. The colonial authorities finally allowed the creation of Singapore citizenship and agreed to amend the British Nationality Act to recognize all Singapore citizens as British subjects. Probably the origin of the idea was the British did not trust uh, that the Chinese would have loyalty to Singapore because they were many immigrants. So Marshall's idea and Lim York's idea and our government's idea was that if you give them a stake in the country, a sense of belonging to a country, slowly, instead of their loyalty being to China, which was communist at that time, <laughs> their loyalty may turn to Singapore. During that time, civics courses were organised to teach the population the meaning of citizenship and to help them understand better the work of the government so that national solidarity could be enhanced. During these sessions, which lasted one to two days each, housewives, school teachers, hawkers, taxi drivers, students and many others attended lectures, visited government departments and met with ministers. approved, the Singapore Citizenship Ordinance recognised all local born as Singapore citizens. Immigrants who had lived here for at least eight years could register for citizenship. A three-month campaign for citizenship was launched, starting from November 1957. Mobile teams such as this at the Fort Canning Centre were sent to various locations throughout the island to register new citizens. 
registration was made fast and simple to enable more people to vote at the next general elections scheduled for 1959. The response was overwhelming. Hours of registration had to be extended. In the first month alone, 90,000 new citizens were registered, Chinese, Indian and Malay. At the end of three months, 325,000 had given up their immigrant status and become citizens. One of the first was Lian Yin Chao. After I register as a Singapore citizen, I'm very happy. I feel the hard work I work together with the Chamber of Commerce and other people now succeed. Apabila saya menerima sertifikat kerajaan ini, saya begitu gembira sekali dan terbayang di pemikiran saya bahawa satu ketika nanti saya akan menetap di Singapura dan bekerja di Singapura. Almost all the eligible Chinese immigrants, about 200,000 in all, became citizens, many of whom registered at the Singapore Chinese Chamber of Commerce. The registration exercise doubled Singapore's electoral role, incorporating the Indian and Chinese immigrant communities into the political life of the island. From across the seas they had come, each chasing a dream, but eventually setting up a permanent home here. Together with the Malay community, they became the ones from whom a new nation developed in 1965. These new citizens changed voting patterns in Singapore, casting that decisive vote in the 1959 general elections, which gave a young party, the People's Action Party, political leadership during the next few decades. Political developments since then, such as merger with Malaysia and later the creation of an independent country, demanded the adoption of new and tighter citizenship laws. The 1957 ordinance has hence been superseded, but more significantly, Singapore citizenship has taken on a new meaning. Giving citizenship means that you said this is your country. No, we didn't expect this to uh, this idea to mature in the minds of people for at least a generation <laughs> and as you can see now it took more than a generation uh, when the older generation is phased off and the younger generation are born here and they're from school taught to be loyal to the country to this country and to look to the Singapore as their own country they may look to the mother country for culture and for other ties. But for loyalty, they would say, this is my country. And today you can see that has happened.